Family Theater presents Marshall Thompson and Pat Crowley. Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Girl in the Green Dress, starring Pat Crowley. And now, here's your host, Marshall Thompson. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Girl in the Green Dress, starring Pat Crowley. just doesn't understand me. She just doesn't understand. So you walked all the way over here to Pearl Street to see me. Must be something pretty important. Well, it is to me, Grandma. Mm-hmm. A boy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shall we step out in the backyard? Here. Let's just sit on the top of the steps. <sighs> you, you see all these geraniums? I started them all from slips. Oh, they're beautiful. Well, Enough beating around the flowers. Now, what about this young man? Doesn't your mother approve? She doesn't even know him. Mm-hmm. And he hardly... He hardly knows I exist. Oh, that's the problem, is it? It's... Well, it's the system. The system? Oh, you know what I mean. We must be ladies. We must sit demurely and wait to be noticed. We can never call them. We have to wait for them to call us. And if we let them know we want them to call, then we're too bold and we never hear from them again. It's as vicious a system as, well, anything. Oh? Man has to be the aggressor, and we have to sit on our hands and wait. Oh, it's a man's world, all right. Mm -hmm, to a degree, but I certainly think you can do more than sit on your hands and wait. Oh, what about this boy? Someone you know at school? He's a senior. And he doesn't even know you're alive. Oh, I suppose he knows I'm alive, all right. In fact, I... Well, I sort of have a date with him. <laughs> well, that's usually a pretty good beginning. Well, it would be, but for him, it's a blind date. Oh, if it were somebody else, well, it... It wouldn't really matter so much, but with Jim... Oh, Grandma, I've just got to make a good impression. Ah, I think I know what you mean. This boy, uh, Jim... Uh, Jim Handley. He's pretty special to you, huh? I mean, really special. I think so. Alice, how old are you now? Seventeen. Well, now, just for fun. Just for fun, suppose this Jim Handley proposed to you. Would you quit school and marry him? Grandma, that's ridiculous. Well, just answer my question now. Well, I... I don't know. I, I don't think so. Why? Well, I suppose because I don't think I'm smart enough to get married yet. Oh, but that'd never happen anyway. Why do you say that? Well, because I checked up a little bit. Jim's majoring in chemistry to be a teacher. And he'll have to do at least two years postgraduate work for his master's. And, well, by that time, I'll be almost 20, and he'll be 21. Then it'd probably take him a year to get established, and that'd mean that... He, <laughs> he really is quite special, isn't he? What can I do, Grandma? Be entirely honest with him in everything. If he's trying for a master's degree in chemistry, he's probably got a pretty good head. The smart men don't much like the little games such girls play. Games? Well, I mean, like, making him wait a few minutes when he calls for you. Or pretending you're really much more sophisticated than you are. Uh, having him call you back to find out about a date when you know perfectly well that you have nothing to do on the evening in question. And in the matter of those little games of jealousy. Jealousy? I mean, when a girl tries to increase a man's interest by making him jealous. Oh, she's being very foolish. Oh, Natalie does that all the time. It seems to work for her. Yeah, it seems to work, perhaps. But it's an insidious game. Uh, perhaps the worst of all. You see, Alice, yeah, a woman either adds to a man or she takes from him. And you certainly don't add anything to him when you try to bring out one of the worst qualities in human nature. 
then too, it makes people unhappy. If you love someone, you certainly don't want to make them unhappy. Oh, that's true. And would a smart man marry a girl who'd make him unhappy just to test him? Or to try and stir his interest? Well, I guess not. In other words, just... Well, just be honest with him. Well, that about covers it. Hmm. How did you know all this? Oh, I learned it from your grandfather. From grandfather? Oh, it must have been a long time, though, since you and grandfather were courting. Oh, now human nature hasn't changed so much since then. Oh, dear me, how long has it been? My, my, almost 60 years. Well, uh, I wouldn't worry. I think the rules still apply. Did you use them to get grandpa? Well, of course, I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't suppose I did. At least, not at the beginning, but then ours was a little different situation. Not much, but just a little. Tell me about it. I thought you wanted advice about your gym, Handley. Well, it might help. Well, it might help at that. You see, I too revolted against the system, but it was a long, long time ago. Uh, dear, are you sure you want to hear? Oh, please. Well, in a way, the situation was very much like yours. And if I remember correctly, I look very much like you do right now. Did you start with a blind date? I suppose you'd call it that. I don't remember what it was in those days. Wasn't that sort of, well, sort of bold then? Well, it would have been, Alice. But you see, I just moved into town, and my cousin Millicent had taken it to herself uh, to make me acquainted and see that I had a good time. So, through her... Well, perhaps I should say, through her gentleman friend, I got a date to go to the midsummer dance at Alicia's Gardens with Andrew Jones. Oh, from the moment I first saw him, I knew he was just what I wanted. But Andrew, well, he was one of the opposite opinion, you see. He didn't like me at all, and the evening was half over before I found out why. <laughs> So, Mr. Jones? Huh? Oh, yeah. Real stem winder. Oh, Henley! Come on, William. Really? Isn't this just the most wonderful dance? William and I are just having a grand time, aren't we, William? Grand? Emily, you just look so lovely in your organdy. Don't you think so, Andy? A regular picture. And the color so becoming looks cool as a breath of spring. Oh, I wish I was as cool as you look, Emily. I swear I'm about to faint. William just wouldn't let me sit out one single dance. The band seems to be taking an intermission. Maybe a little punch would help cool us. Punch? A splendid idea. Shall we all retire to the... That's awfully nice of you, Mr. Harper, but if you don't mind, I'd like a word with Millicent. By all means. Why don't you two boys go on over and we'll join you? If you don't mind. No, oh, not at all. Not at all. Take all the time you want. Give us time enough for a beer. William! Joking. Only joking. Come on, Andy. I'm with you. I swear, those boys. You have to watch them every minute of the time. Say, Emily, how do you like Andy Jones? Isn't he a sport? Not real handsome, but nice. Millie. If it wasn't for William, I might even go for him myself. Millie, what's wrong with me? Huh? What's wrong with me? What do you mean? Well, am I funny looking? Is my face dirty? What's wrong with me? Well, you look fine to me. I swear, Emily, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, there must be something. Why do you say that? He hasn't said six words to me all evening. He acts like he's mad at me. Oh, that's nonsense, Emily. I don't know where you could have gotten an idea like Billy, that. Billy, if we hadn't come in William's buggy, I just know he would have taken me home already. And I don't know why. Oh, do you... Do you want to go home? No. No, I... I just want to know what's wrong. I can't seem to make any sort of an impression on him. But you'd like to, is that it? No, I didn't say that. Oh, oh, now don't tell me, my dear cousin Emily's losing her head over Andy Jones. Oh, Emily, I'm not losing my my head. I was just wondering what was the matter. I thought you might know. You do know, don't you? Now, Emily, is there something wrong with me, Millie? What is it? Well, William and I thought, well, that it would all blow over. That what would all blow over? Well. Have you noticed the very striking girl in the green dress? Have I noticed her? Mr. Jones will hardly take his eyes off of her. Well, her name's Irene Leeds, and she's new in town, too. But I don't see what that's got to well, do with... Well, we... Uh, William and I told Andy that she was you. 
I mean that you were she. That his date was with her. Really? Emily, Andy wouldn't have ever gone on a blind date unless it were for something special. Well, thank oh, you. I don't mean that the way it sounded. No. Well, just mentioned that Andy had asked about the new girl in town and he thought Andy meant you. It certainly wasn't up to me to tell him he was wrong when you might get a nice evening out of the mistake. You see what I mean? I certainly didn't mean for anybody's feelings to be hurt. I just wanted you to have a nice evening. Well, thanks, Millie. Oh, don't give up the ship. Never say die. You just get in there and fight. She's not one speck prettier than you. If I could only make an impression on him, any kind of an impression, he doesn't even know I'm here. Well, I guess it's up to you to let him know you're here then. Oh, I will, if it's the last thing I ever do. Well, come on now. Oh, mustn't keep the gentlemen waiting too long or they'll start looking over the rest of the field. Oh, man, aren't they wonderful? Oh, now, where are those boys? Oh, there they are. Where? Oh, William! Over here. Took the liberty of ordering you girls sarsaparillas. I hope you like sarsaparilla, Miss White. Oh, I do. Thank you. Well, that's good. Band seems to be taking some time off. <laughs> Give us something to do. William, my chair. Oh, of course, my dear. Hey, Andy. Oh, all right. May I hold your chair, Miss White? If you don't mind, I believe I'd like to walk in the garden. Wouldn't you, Mr. Jones? Why walk in the garden? I just would. I thought it'd be nice, the... The flowers and all. Can't even see them. It's night. Oh, really, Andy? It isn't as if there weren't any lanterns in the garden. It might be nice at that. Millie, how would you like William. to... William! Sorry. Well, if you don't want to, Mr. Jones. Oh, it's all right. Doesn't make much sense to me, but I don't suppose it makes any difference. See you later, old man. Yeah. Now, this door here. Oh, thank you. Now, don't you think it's nice out here? Hmm? What? I said... Don't you think it's nice out here in the garden? Well, if you like this sort of thing, I suppose. Oh, the smells. Isn't that jasmine? Huh? That sweet scent, isn't it? Night-blooming jasmine? I'm no flower inspector. Hmm. I, I was reading that some of the new automobiles go up to 12 miles an hour. Huh. No, you don't believe it, Mr. Jones. Well, I know it sounds hard to believe, What's the but... use in talking about it? The automobile, a toy, a passing fancy. Never replaced the horse. What's the use even talking about it? You know, it's not very easy talking to you about anything, Mr. Jones. Well, that's the kind of a fella I am. Oh, that's the kind of a fella. I was wondering. Huh? I really know so little about you. In fact, we really know nothing at all about each other. Let's talk a little. Let's go back inside. Why don't you sit here, right on the bench? Because I don't want to sit down there on the bench. And as long as you're with me, you'll do as I say. No. And that was the last straw. Now you're not going inside either. And who says I'm not? I do. And if you try, I'll scream. Scream? And when the people come out, I'll tell them I've never seen you before and that you tried to kiss me. Why, close your mouth, Mr. Jones. Well, you've got bats in your belfry. Haven't you... Haven't you got any principles? Nope. Sit down, Mr. Jones. What a crazy kind of a hairpin you are. Now, shall we talk? I'll never go on another blind date as long as I live. I need a smoke. Go right ahead. I like the smell of a good cigar. And, and I thought you were a lady. I'll take issue with you on that statement. You thought. Mr. Jones, you haven't thought about me at all this evening. You've been too busy watching that girl in the green dress. Green dress? The one you thought was me when you arranged to bring me to this dance, and it's not fair. Well, at least she's a lady. You don't even know her. If I could afford a, a dress like that, you'd probably say I was a lady. Oh, the dress. Oh, the dress. And I could do more for it than she can. Certainly not my fault I can't afford clothes like that. Certainly not my fault I have to work for a living. Work for it? But you're a woman. Well, I'm glad you finally noticed. What a... What kind I'm a of... a secretary. A secretary? A female secretary? Now, what other kind would I be? What kind of a woman is this? But don't get me wrong, Mr. Jones. I'm only working as a secretary until I can earn enough money to be an actress. An actress? Mm. And then when I'm a big success, I'm going to Washington and chain myself to the flagpole and make speeches for women's rights. A suffragette? I might have known. They're all a bunch of loonies. Oh, women should be entitled to every right men have. A woman's place is in the home. A woman can do anything a man can do. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I need a smoke. Give me one of those cigars. Uh, cigars? That's what I said. Don't tell me you... you smoke. I'm starting right now. 
I'll have to have something to do when I'm chained to that flagpole. Great jumping horn toads. The cigar. Oh, no. No one will ever say Andy Jones gave tobacco to a woman. Cigars. Have you no principles? No. Want to hear me scream? No, no, no. 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 Here's your cigar. Thanks. Uh, light? Oh, be reasonable. Are you going to give me a light? All right, all right. Here you are. Andy Jones, how will you ever look yourself in the eye again? And I want it... I want it thoroughly understood that I am a lady. Hmm. Probably more of a lady than... than you've ever met before. You... You can bet your picture on that. Sure. Hmm. And at least I'm more of a lady than... than you are a gentleman. At least I haven't been watching somebody else all evening. Uh, you're smoking that kind of fast, aren't you? Why, if you were any kind of a... any kind of a gentleman, I... What's the matter? Why, there... There's nothing... Nothing the matter with... with me. Sure? Of, of course, I'm... I'm sure. I thought maybe the cigar... Oh, it's... 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 delicious. Sure. A woman can do anything a man can do. Mr... Uh, Mr. Jones. Yeah? I wonder... I wonder if you'd mind getting Millicent. I believe the sarsaparilla we had earlier... I believe it's beginning to disagree with me. Oh! finds out about this? Oh, Millie, Millie, you wouldn't. I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, don't even think of such a thing. We girls have to stick together, you know. Uh, um, I say, um... um that you stand over there in the dark, William? Yes, it's me. I, I thought your cousin might like another wet towel. We've uh. had enough wet towels. Oh, I ask you to stay inside now. Will you please listen no, to me? No, no, Millie. It was very thoughtful. Thank you. You're feeling better, I trust? <sighs> Much better. Can't imagine how there could have been anything wrong with that sarsaparilla. Didn't seem to bother anyone else. It works that way sometimes. But still, I Maybe it just didn't match your dinner or something. Let's just not talk about it, shall we, William? You'll have to pardon William, Emily. He's very clinical-minded. I'm afraid I'm not showing Mr. Jones a very good time. Oh, he's doing all right. And just what do you mean by that? Well, that is, I... Well, I mean, he's certainly understanding enough to let his... Uh... What's he up to? Never mind, Millie. I will so mind. William? Well, he's... He's dancing. Well, I mean, he was the last time I saw him. Couldn't be now, though. <laughs> There's no music. With whom was he dancing? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. One of the girls, I suppose. William, are you being smart with me? No, Millie. One of the girls, indeed. Who, William? Well... Well, it was the girl in the green dress. Irene Leeds! That scallywag! He doesn't even know her. Well, he didn't have to. He cut in on somebody. I believe I'll just go give him a piece of my mind. Millie, please. I've made up my mind. Well, it won't help matters. Makes no difference. Your cousin was right, Millicent. I forbid you to interfere. Oh, you do, do you? Well, you and I aren't married, William Hopper, and until we are, you can just forbid your head off. Now stand out of my way. Now, oh, Millie. Thank you. I'll tell him a thing or two. Right is right and wrong is wrong, and a man should dance with the girl he brought with him. I'll let him know that in no uncertain terms, I will. She... She does like to have her own way. Yes, she does. I'm, uh... I'm sure Andy didn't mean anything by it. I mean, dancing with Irene. It's all right. He and I... We've been friends a long time. He's Prince of a fella. A bit hard-headed, but regular Prince of a fella. You and uh, he hitting it off all right? I mean, you like him? Oh, yes, I like him. I mean, he seems quite nice. Yeah, prince of a fella. The music's quite nice, isn't it? Wouldn't you like to come inside now? I better stay out here for a while. Oh, if, if you want to go, it's all right. Well, I... Uh, I don't mind. Well, after all, it's a dance, you know, and... Well, the tickets alone amount to quite a sizable investment. Yeah, 25 cents a piece, you know. Well, even besides that, it doesn't seem right to waste all that good music. Oh, it's all right. You find Millie and, and dance, Mr. Hopper. And if I don't get the rig back to the livery stable by midnight, they'll charge me for another half day. 
You're, you're sure you'll be all right? Oh, fine. Thank you. Well, I'll look out now and then. Well, I mean, to see if you need anything. Shame to waste all that good music, you know. Oh, I'll be all right. I'll be fine. The, the bell of the ball. Oh, what a mess I turned out to be. Hello. Oh, Mr. Jones. Mind if I join you? Well, well no, no. Sit, sit, sit down. Oh, thank you. I believe Millie was looking for you. Did, did she... Didn't see her. Well, here, what's this? Your, your eyes are wet. Have you been crying? That's not all. I'm afraid I made quite a fool of myself. <laughs> so did I. You? Uh, William was dancing with a girl in a green dress. Miss Lee? Uh, I cut in on him. She's a giggler. Wow! Wow! An evening with her would have put me in the booby hatch. Oh, that kind of wow. I, um... Uh, I imagine you think I'm not much better. Oh, no! I have a confession to make, Mr. Jones. About some of the things I said. Well, I do have to work. I, I, I've been thinking about those things you said. I, I guess it's all right if a girl wants to be an actress, if she's if she's a good actress. I mean, on the legitimate stage. Oh, no, I couldn't. I, I mean, all those people staring at me. You couldn't? Well, what do you think they'd do if you change yourself to a flagpole in Washington? No, 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 that's what I meant about the confession. You mean you're not a suffragist? Oh, even if I were brave enough, I just know my mother wouldn't let me. You mean all those things you said, they were all lies? All lies. Well, if there's one thing I cannot abide, it's a liar. I was going to apologize for giving you that cigar, but by Jim, I'll be hanged if I'll do it now. You got exactly what you deserved, exactly. You're right. Exactly what I deserved. You agree with me? Oh, I do. Well, then, what did you do it for? To make an impression. You weren't paying any attention to me at all, and I wanted to make a good impression, but after a while I decided to... Well, to settle for any kind of an impression I could get. <laughs> what a funny kind of a hairpin you are. Well, it was silly, I know. You know, you're really kind of pretty. No, I'm a sight. No, I mean it. In, in fact, I... In fact? Well, I was going to say, if you have no objections, I mean, if you'll forgive me, I'd like to call on you. Oh, I have no objections. Maybe two or three times a week. I... I'd like that. But no more of the flagpole business. Oh, no. And no, no more cigars. Oh, definitely no more cigars. And no more lies between us. Not for any reason. Complete honesty. Can't build anything without trust. All right. Fine. Uh, shall we go inside and dance, Emily? After all, the tickets did represent quite an investment. was the beginning, the rather hectic beginning of our courtship. Two years after that, Alice, your grandfather and I were married. Oh, there were a few ups and downs, but I suppose you could say that, for the most part, we're living happily ever after. Golly! <laughs> now, do you think that'll help you much with your young man? With Jim? I don't know. Now you see what I mean when I tell you to be honest with him. You see what all my lies amounted to. I'd have been as well off if I'd just excused myself and given him a chance to dance with the other girl. But, Grandma, what if she hadn't been a giggler? <laughs> well, I guess you wouldn't be here. <laughs> I guess not. I don't think you'll have that problem, though. No? No. <laughs> Come on inside. I should think it'd be, well, as, as likely to happen to me. You certainly don't have much claim on a fellow when you're on a blind date. And if some other girl makes a bigger impression on him... Reach me the cookie jar, hmm? Oh. There. Now then, I want you to take this. Money? Oh, no, Now, Grandma. yes, you can, you can. I've thought this all over. You want to make a good impression. Well, yes, but... Have you managed to save up enough for a new dress for the occasion? Well, I can't, really. And with what it's costing Pop to keep me in college, I'd, I'd be too ashamed to ask him. I know, I know. 
So you take this and buy yourself a nice formal. Impress him with the way you look. Something ladylike. But a number that will keep him looking at you. And then if you can be as beautiful as you look, you won't have a thing to worry about, see? Oh, Grandmother, you're a doll. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder what I should get. Well, uh, I wouldn't want to influence your decision, my dear, but don't you think you might look nice in, say, uh, pastel green? <laughs> <laughs> This is Marshall Thompson again. One of the great joys in life is to have a definite and useful goal to work towards. It's like going on a journey when you know you have a valuable and worthwhile end in view. That's the story of every boy and girl starting out and getting married. They have one of the most wonderful goals in the world, making a home, making a happy home together, and giving security to their family. Yes, and sometimes it's tough going because they have to start without many of the things they'd like to have, things they can hope to get only with hard work and sacrifice. It's good for these people to remember that one of life's great joys can be working together for that home they have planned to build. And it's good to remember we don't have to do it alone. We can have the most powerful help in all our work. We can have that help for the asking. Prayer. Family prayer that should find a place in every home. Because with God's help, there's joy and happiness in working together, especially working towards the most wonderful goal in the world, a happy home. For happiness can't be all of our own making. We need God's help. Yes, all of us do. And we have that help simply for the asking. Ask and you shall receive. That's the power of prayer. That's the wonderful help that every home can have through family prayer. Daily family prayer means God is there in your home. It means the joy of sharing your happiness with others. It means God's blessing on your home. And with God's blessing, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Girl in the Green Dress, starring Pat Crowley. Marshall Thompson was your host. Others in our cast were Martha Wentworth, John Stevenson, Virginia Gregg, and Michael Hayes. The script was written and directed by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present Cowtown, starring Walter Brennan. Richard Denning will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs>